All right. <clears throat> you know, I think it's really interesting. Good morning, by the way. Um, it's really interesting that that ends with uh, Jesus said all that so they could have great joy. I'm going to start. This just came to me. but I'm going to start like I want to ask the students, what is something that brings you great joy? What is something that brings you great joy? What does that mean to you? Yes, Joss. Come on, wow. Can we just applaud that? Can, thank you, yeah. So I'm going to stop right there because I, I, I want that to be like the standard answer because actually there's a difference between happiness and joy. There's a difference between happiness and joy. Joy is like how Josiah says, it's about the goal. It's about the victory. It's about the accomplishment or happiness is more of a, of a reaction to a thing. It, like it makes you happy in the moment, but joy is like you have it when you're not happy. You have it when other things are going bad. Um, so yeah, there's just like another, uh, a few scriptures that I wanted to go back and read because I think it really helps uh, with what Josiah just said and making sure we get the fruit of the spirit from Thursday. And it's uh, verse 15, starting at one, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While each branch that does, that does bear fruit, he prunes so that, so that it will be even more fruitful. So students, I want to ask you, has your parents ever told you how to do something better even when you're doing it right. <laughs> Can you explain that? All right, let, me, let, me, let me make sure you guys understand that. Your parents taught you how to do something better, even though you were already doing it right. So this is not a bad moment. So go ahead. Um, when you taught me how to draw like I was drawing something right, but you taught me how to draw even better so it looks more realistic. There we go. That was a good answer. Um, so that's important because that's pruning, right? So the, the scripture says God cuts things off that won't bear fruit, and the things that are going to bear fruit, he prunes it, means he makes it better. He, he puts a limiter on it so it does bear more fruit, and it grows in the direction it's supposed to grow. Students are on fire today. It also says, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So this is really a, a parent-child conversation in some ways. Um, because the father, right, is dealing with the son in us. We have the spirit of adoption. We're all supposed to be more and more and more like Jesus, right? So... We need to understand what Jesus was actually talking about. And when you really look at it, thank you. <laughs> Jesus was talking about behavior. Jesus was talking about behavior. Okay, so I'm going to give some basic definitions because this is for all of us. But I want the students to walk away with something a little bit deeper. Behavior is how you act, right? Behavior is how you act. And behavior comes from how you think and how you feel. This is setting them up for something very, very uh, investigative. It's like a little interview I have for them. So remember, behavior is how you act, and it comes from how you think and how you feel. You could be born that way, or something can happen around you, and you develop a behavior. So now... I have some questions for the students. And I have this board back here. I'm going to move this out the way. I have this board back here. And we want to see if we can create a vine of what we believe are just the natural responses. OK? What are the natural responses, our natural 
actions or reactions. All right? This is kind of deep. So, Alana, I'm going to ask you the first question. No pressure. <laughs> first, let me tell you, all right, three basic emotions, sad, anger, happy. Can you say sad, anger, happiness? Sad, anger, happiness. They know what those are. That's why we're starting with those, right? And these behaviors are like branches. So I'm going to ask these questions. They're a little bit tricky. So don't worry about getting them right. We just want to create branches, okay? So Alana, if you lost, <laughs> if you, this actually really happened. So you got to be honest now. If you lost one of your favorite toys, do you get upset? It's, it's okay. I want you to actually give the wrong answer. At first, you would get upset, right? She gave a spiritual answer. She's like, I, you know, I crucify the flesh is what she really said. But like, yeah, at first, you would definitely, right? You would be upset. Can you come put a branch on this vine for me? Anywhere you want. Anywhere you want. All right. I have another question. And let's try to make it go outward. Yeah, like outward. There you go. And press it on there. Good. Next question. It won't be too many, trust me. Who wants to answer a question about sadness? If you can't find something that you're looking for, do you get sad and cry? Grace, you, you rose your hand. Okay, can you come put a branch up? I'm setting them up, huh, big time. Hold this. There you go. Put you some tape there. All right. Stick it, stick it on there. Next question. Is it good to have candy at any time? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So I still want you to put a branch up, okay? That, that was the right answer, but she still gonna put a branch up. Here you go. Stick it somewhere on the left. There you go. Another question, is it important to own a cat or a dog? Is that like, is that necessary? Is it important? <laughs> Esther, it can keep you entertained. Okay, can you come put a branch up for me? All right. So we're going to stop there. Can you put the tape on the back? There you go. We're going to stop there because we could just keep going and keep going and keep going. But what I'm trying to show you guys is that our children are much deeper than we know if we actually start engaging them about how they feel. Because these are, these are spiritual things, right? So like a person who's 80 and a child who's eight months, they can both feel anger. For whatever reason, they feel the same anger. Like the reason almost doesn't matter. What matters is that that emotion is felt no matter the age, right? And because that emotion being felt, there is behavior that comes after that. And that's the difference between the adult and the child. So this is what happens when there's bad fruit. Alana, can you help me out? I want you to put this bad fruit up, okay? Okay. Put it on the right side. Just grab some tape and put it on the right side. So what happens when there's bad fruit? Let's use Esther's example. You get a dog, right? Does that automatically mean you will take care of the dog well? No, right? But a whole series of behaviors follow after you get the dog, after that action. And this is, this is right up my alley because... I was a dog trainer in America, and there are so many people, I was like, you don't, you don't need a dog because you're treating it like a purse or you're treating it like a baby. Thank you. So this is what happens when we have bad fruit, right? This is how God looks at it. Like, this is for the adults. God is looking at us like, <laughs> that is not going to produce the wine that I desire. This is not the fruit of my spirit, right? So what God does is, because remember, a tree is known by its fruit. 
So he's making sure in order that we don't produce the wrong stuff, he has to prune it. So, Josh, can you come pull some of these grapes off? And you're going to throw it in the fire, all right? This is going to be the fire. The grapes. Pull the grapes. See, they're so bad, he didn't even know. Look, pull those off. The grapes. Pull these off. Yeah, I'll take these for you. Pull the grapes off. Thank you. So God comes in, and he pulls off these branches. He prunes us, right? And then he throws them into the fire. Students, what do you think that fire is? Alana, can you say it louder? The fire of the Holy Spirit. So this is a work that God is doing in us, right? And we're getting ready to go into prayer right now. But first, we're going to put up some good fruit. Serena, can you help me put up some good fruit? <laughs> Here you go. Put the tape on the back. You want to do one? Awesome. Put the tape on the back. There you go. Put that on there. Here you go. Awesome. Very good. Okay. Uh huh. That's fine. You can leave it there. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. You may be seated. You guys take a seat. Thank you. You can put it down. This is what God wants to see, right? So the re visuals are really, really, really important because everything that's good isn't God. Once again, using the example of the dog, just because we have a dog doesn't mean it's going to make us a better person. It can, though. It can, though. It can teach you discipline and responsibilities, right? And so the reason why this is a great example is because they love playing with the dog, but we're the ones that have to take care of the dog, right? So that is my last example. At your tables, what we're going to do right now, we're going to break into prayer. And we are going to look at the fruit of the Spirit and the actions that follow having that fruit. This is important. The fruit of the Spirit, they're not emotions. Love is not emotion. It's the action. If you love me, keep my commandments. Greater love have no man than this, that he lays down his life for his friends. So, yes, we learned about the fruit of the Spirit Thursday, but the branches of behavior is how we apply that fruit and we get that fruit to grow. So we're going to start praying at our table for God to lead us in the fruit that is the strongest in our life. Go ahead and start praying with the people at your table for God to bless the fruit that is strongest in your life. If faithfulness is strongest, pray for God to show you how to be more faithful because he talked about producing more fruit. If self-control is the strongest fruit, ask God to show you how to have self-control in areas where you don't have it. You're asking for God to increase you to produce more fruit. That's the prayer at the table. After you pray that, you're going to pray for God to give you whatever fruit you feel is the weakest or is missing. So first prayer, Lord, please bless the way that I love people. Bless the way that I'm gentle and the way I help people that is directed and guided to the right area. And then whatever fruit you don't have, Lord, give me more self-control. Give me more kindness. Give me more patience. Give me more peace. So there's quick prayers. It should take about two minutes. Amen.